Welcome back, sir. This is uh, this is gonna be an interesting one because we're having a million. You got some incense burning over there, or what? <sighs> we be burning fires, turning da da. You know how the Sean Paul song goes. <laughs> um, there's, yeah, there's man. gonna be a lot of delays because of the internet. So just bear with us. Well, at least the power <laughs> is on today, bro. I was like, cool. I can fit this in. You know, everything's going great. Internet's not great, but lights are on, and then. There was no lights. There was definitely no internet, and I was LTE only. It's Maine, bro. Ah, oh, man. Someday, I know. It's like it always... It's almost <laughs> like... It takes the guy on the scene a minute. That's what we're doing here. It's like we have a tape delay of seven seconds. Yeah, it's almost like you'd be better trying to hotspot your, from your phone to your computer. I know. Uh, but I have my... Um, it's my PC, so I can't do it. Of course not. Damn PCs, dude. But anyway, what's new? How are you? I feel like I haven't, you know, talked to you in a minute. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, I'm good, man. I'm really good. I've got a lot of new things to share. I'm sure you do too. Um, there's some stuff I can't share yet, but I shared with you off the air because it's in progress. It's, it's going to take, it's going to take a while to get going and um but you know in future episodes it's going to be a big part of this so i'll just do that tease this it will my new development will be a big part of what we do so that's cool I'm very excited um just got back from the gym so i'm like just in my hoodie still sweating haven't showered uh, went down to the red sox game um what's today today is we're recording late so today's for thursday Okay, Thursday. recording on a Thursday. Yeah. Went down Tuesday night because I wanted the Pedro Martinez t-shirt. I just wanted for the giveaway. That's why I went. I was trying to bring Joe, but he didn't get off work until like four. And I was like, ah, it's too late, bro. I, I got to miss the giveaway. First 1,500 people. Got to make it. Um, it was cold, rainy, but didn't rain during the game. They took the tarp off the field, which I geeked out on because I've never seen that happen before at any baseball game. And I'm almost 37 years old and I've never seen it in person. <laughs> so uh, watched the whole game. Went, went good. Sox won. Hit a bunch of home runs. Uh, I'm trying to figure out where we left off because we we, recall, we canned a couple episodes and then you, um, you had... Julia come visit, then you have vacation. And in between that, um, recording those, I've just been getting set up back in Maine. Uh, it, there's been a lot of stuff. Well, how things are going for me is I got felt up by LAX security. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. How was that? Was it, was it nice? Politely, if I may add. Okay. With the backs of their hands. So here's the thing, dude. <laughs> I'm going through <laughs> I'm going through security at LAX to come back to Denver after I had just went on a shopping spree. I'm brand new to collecting WWE elites, so I thought, you know, while I'm out there, let me try to find some cool shops. Not only did I find some cool shops, but I found the Mattel headquarters. So I went right to the headquarters to their shop, bought a bunch of stuff, which I'm probably going to be eating cereal for the next week because of it. But <laughs> fast forward to me trying to leave Los Angeles, my backpack is so full of new toys that, which sounds really ridiculous to say out loud. What kind of toys are you packing? <laughs> what you got all the batteries for? <laughs> but all these new WWE figures that I could, I zipped the bag, but the zipper busted open because it was too full. So I had to condense everything into this tote bag, right? And put a shirt over it because I'm flying spirit, which is already throwing caution whoa, whoa, at the whoa, wind. Whoa, whoa. And you're <laughs> flying spirit on top of all the bad things happening. You're really, dude, you, I need to burn some more incense for you. Dude, I was rolling the <laughs> dice, man. That was the it's only move got. I had. It's all he's got. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going through, and because I can, only, you can only bring one bag, right? Unless you want to pay like $90 for a carry on. I'm like, at that point, I might as well fly Delta or JetBlue, right? But. So I'm going through, and I have to wear my heaviest stuff because I don't have room in my bag. So I'm wearing jeans, I'm wearing a hoodie, <laughs> and the zipper on my jeans sets off the metal detector. And the guy like goes down to his walkie. He's like, "I need some backup over here, sex too." I'm like, "What is going on?" So he pulls me aside, 
And he has his back up behind him. He's like, so what's uh, going on here? And he points at a screen, and there's a big red sign on my crotch. And I, was, I go, I don't know. You tell me what is going on here. He goes, I'm going to need you to come with us. So he pulls <laughs> me back, right? And he goes, so this is what's going to happen. And he starts putting on. Oh, God. Oh, no. Putting on his gloves. And I'm thinking, bro, you're not going up there. Like, this is not happening, right? Hello. Cavity search. <laughs> so he goes, well, here's what's going to happen. With the back of my hands, I'm going to pat you down over your crotchal area. I go, can we not say crotchal? <laughs> is that a word? Is That's just... a fake word. <laughs> It is a made up TSA bullshit word is what it is. So he starts just patting me down. And then he's like, all right, you know, spread your legs. W w one leg out, one leg back. And I'm thinking, I was like, you could at least take me to dinner first, you know? <laughs> oh, Mr. Chappelle, right this way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make light of it. Meanwhile, right, my flight is coming right up. And I need to get to my gate. And he does this way, does this way, does that way. I'm like, all right. I'm in the clear. So you go down to get your little plastic bin and your shoes and all that, except mine aren't there. They've been taken back by security, my bag. So not only do I get stopped, right, and patted down and, you know, rubbed on politely. You got the business. They, yeah, I got the business, bro. The biz, the biz, the business. So they take my bag and the guy's like, whose bag is this? And I'm like, oh gosh it just keeps getting worse you know and all the while i'm looking forward to a spirit flight so he brings me over he's like are there any sharp uh, sharp objects in this that could you know poke or harm me i go no they're just action figures he's like okay hold on hold on i need to go through your bag so he starts going through everything and then all of a sudden he's like oh sh the ultimate warrior dude no way <laughs> brett the hitman heart he goes, do you have Yokozuna in here? And I was like, no, man. Like, these are my new pickups. And Jeez. this is my new hobby. I need to get to my gate. So he's continuing to go through. He's like, oh, dude, you know, Cody Rhodes. Oh, man. And he's just, then he just starts telling me this story about how him and his brother went to the last WWE show. And I'm like, my flight is boarding in 15 minutes. Come on, bro. I need to get out of here. What's your Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can connect after, bro. Like, we can be friends. But ultimately, he gives me back my stuff. I have to repack it all in a broken backpack, which was super tough, and then just re-figure everything out. I had my toiletries bag, but it was poking out, so I had to stuff it in my hoodie because you can only have one bag. Guy. I eventually made it onto the plane, got back here to Denver, and uh, I put all the new figures on display, but, uh, it was an incredible trip, dude. It just really was. I got to unplug from work, from radio and just be with my lady, check out some cool shops. We went to a cool fair street festivals and just LA was super fun, man. I can't wait to get back. Uh, but towards my last day there, I was like, man, I can't wait to talk to Dave again. I can't wait to record again. I couldn't even wait to get back on the air because I, just, I, I love it. You know that. So yeah. I was like, while I'm out there on vacation, I'm still creating stuff. And right. I don't know if you've seen on my Instagram, I've been posting up new mini vlogs of the toy hunts and all that kind of stuff. And those are just super fun to make. And I'm actually creating new friendships within that community, which is really cool. So I think one of the reasons that I was kind of so hard on Denver at first is because my lady wasn't here. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, this is just a pit stop to get me to where I want to go. But now I'm starting to, you know, get in with this community. I'm starting to make some friends. I'm going to some cool events. I'm meeting some cool people. And, uh, yeah, it's making it, it's not kind of, it's making it a lot more fun living out here, you know, in the big city. All right. I think it's just because you got off the spirit flight. You were so happy to be anywhere <laughs> but the plane that now you're just, Hallelujah. oh, I love Denver. It's so great. Um, yep. I had never been so happy to see the Maha <laughs> getting off that plane. I'll tell you what. Uh, also, you, speaking of meeting new people. You interviewed Louis Capaldi. I got to know what that was like. I heard a little bit, but I didn't want to ask too many questions. Dude, that was the coolest, man. I remember first meeting Louis on Zoom, excuse me, a couple of years ago while I was working in Nashville. 
and you think like, gosh, this, this guy, his music is, it's so heartbreaking. It's just, it's just really sad. So you're like, gosh, like, what am I in for? Couldn't have been more of a 180. It was the funniest dude I've ever talked to. So when his team reached out and asked if I would come in and do some press, you know, I was like, absolutely. I get to meet him in person. So I go, I go backstage do you want the cliff notes or do you want me just to go with the full just, deal? Just here? go with the full deal. We need the deal for the show. The full Monty. Here we go. So we have a set time, right? And then all of a sudden I get a text from the label rep and it's, Hey, can you actually show up 30 minutes earlier? I'm like, well, damn, it's a good thing I'm already dressed. Yeah, let's go. So I get down there and then it's, and she was the, as sweet as can be, but it was like, it's cold outside. And it's like, okay, well, now we have to wait until the original time for the rest of the media to get here. So I'm just You're hanging like, outside. I, I know. I'm in media. I get how this works. Yeah. So I'm hanging outside. I got the roadcaster, my backpack, my tripod, waiting, and, and just meeting a bunch of other industry people, which was pretty cool. So we finally get to go backstage, Mission Ballroom. It was a venue that I hadn't visited yet here in Denver, and it's pretty damn cool. So we go backstage to the green room, and it goes, they go, all right, you got 10 minutes to set up, do your podcast, break down, and get out of there. I'm Damn. Like, oh, gosh, I mean, that's not a lot of time at all. It's like know? Legends of the Hidden Temple. All right, 10 minutes on the <laughs> clock. All right, old Mick, <laughs> let's rock. Let's rock. You beat me to it, you <laughs> son of a gun. So I'm in there setting up, and there's other people setting up their gear too. And fortunately, you have me so trained. Nice. With this Sony 4K camera, I can capture us both. I can punch in either side. I got two XLR mics set up to the Rodecaster Pro. All I needed was an outlet. Boom, I'm ready to roll, right? And the interview couldn't have went better. I was super proud of how I conducted it, and I kind of tried to make it less interview and more JR's hanging out with his friend, Louis Capaldi, like JR and his famous friends, you know? And yes. he's uh, he battles Tourette syndrome, which has gotten really, really bad since his major success. And uh, it was definitely noticeable. And it was really cool for him to just like power through it, you know, like as men, you got to just, you got to do what you have to do. So that was, that was really cool for me. He was, he was as funny as all get out. He had so many jokes, just self deprecating humor as, as I, you know, do all the time on the air. People think it's funny when you make fun of yourself. And uh, I kind of kept it to the three things that I wanted to hit. And then I had a couple things I wanted to kind of spice in there myself. I had him react to a picture he posted and he was kind of being Booker T, but he was naked and he had a bunch of title belts on him and he was the five time, five time. And it was just anytime I can kind of wedge in wrestling, I, I always go for That's it. That's kind of been a staple of the show. Hey, I'm going to throw some wrestling in, see what happens. You don't have to take it. You could leave it. You could, you could throw it right back. Right. Cause I mean, I could talk about that all day. Um, I don't know how much of it you listened to. I didn't know if you wanted to incorporate it into today's show. It's living on the YouTube channel, yeah. so you can you can listen anytime. Go check but. that out for sure. It's it's good because I watched it. I listened to it all. My favorite part, which you made into a short, was the one night stand story. That is like <laughs> the greatest story ever. Can you just recap that one real quick? I can never tell it as great as Lewis, but he teases this story on his new Netflix documentary and it's about a one night stand. And he goes on to tell me that he made sweet, sweet love to a lady. Nice. As you do. Right? Nice. The deed was done. And then he immediately started having a panic attack and he had to call his mother to come pick him up <laughs> no, for dude. a one night stand. <laughs> Again, I can't tell it as good as he does, so definitely go back on the channel on YouTube at your fave homie JR and watch that interview. Uh, yeah, Lewis, he's a class act and just super, super fun to talk to. And hopefully, I'm going to have quite a few more of those lined up for us over the coming months. I like it. It got me thinking. I was trying to think back to not necessarily one night stands, but like a funny sexual encounter that I've had. And I was trying to think of like, what's the funniest thing that's happened to me? You know, like nothing bad happened, but it was like, all right, I, I, uh, it's kind of self-deprecating. Um, 
I'm trying to think if this is something. Yeah, I, I got to share it. I'm just trying to think of how to, to share it. <laughs> can we talk no, about we, this? We can. <laughs> we totally can. Um, it was, let's see. I must have been, I was in high school. So it was like, the. it was like, yeah, some time in, late in high school. And we decided, oh, we should go and like, you know, have sex in a car. But like, where do you go to do that? Cause we didn't know how to do that. Right. Um, and I was like, Oh, well there's this like parking lot of this big, uh, company, but it's like nighttime. So nobody's there. I was like, it's perfect. So I got my 87 Volvo, my, you know, <laughs> you remember the tank, bro. I'm like, yep. I couldn't even believe that this girl would date me in that car, but Hey, I must have game <laughs> if, if yep. she was like willing to do that. And so, you know, we're like getting situated. I'm like sitting in the, in the front seat and it just can't it just doesn't work i just can't get you know i can't get hard basically <laughs> i just can't Dave just harding folks we're just like sitting there um we're well, just it's like, like uncomfortable it, and awkward and there's no room and so it's like we just started laughing because i was like you could just sit in my lap and we'll just like i guess we should just go back to my house now yeah <laughs> and so actually nothing happened <laughs> That's amazing. I tried though. Man, I've I've done it in a car before, only once, and uh, it, yeah, it just what it's, it's not, not all it's hyped up to be in the movies, you know, <laughs> where it's all steamy and the handprints on the. It's just it's uncomfortable, and you're watching out for cops, like boop, 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 boop. you know, you like you don't or neighbors, you know. I know, and you know, in the movies, it looks so spacious because they cut cars in half so they can push the camera in and got all this room unrealist there was no room in a car yeah when i did it was in like a little hyundai so (laughs) so first of all getting in at all was tough yeah yeah especially being six three jeez dude being six foot sometimes it's like look we're not we're like regular tall people imagine what seven foot people go through in life can't do it like shaq can never hook up with a chick in the back of a honda (laughs) I couldn't even fit in a Hyundai, bro. No, dog, not even close. So on that same topic, I remember being like petrified of women up until I was like 17. I couldn't talk to them. I would just stutter like an idiot. Couldn't understand why any girl would ever be interested in me. And I remember like one of my first sexual encounters. We were at a high school basketball game, right? Right. And this... This girl was, like, crushing on me hard, and I thought she was, like, super cute. So I was like, whatever, you know? And uh, everybody was, like, pressuring us. And you know in Maine, basketball season is in the middle of the winter. It is. Okay? It's very cold. So all of a sudden, she, like, takes my hand, and we start walking out of the building and immediately just freezing. Like, what are we doing out here? Outside. Fun. Sounds great. Outside. So we leave the gym and we go to the baseball field, pitch black, only the lights of the field are on, and we go into the dugout, (laughs) the baseball (laughs) dugout. And it reminds me of that real, this lyric, and you might need to bleep this, but in the dugout, get in dugouts. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, you know, and... Had, I don't really had, know. had an encounter in the dugout, and we're gonna, I guess, we'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that, and then went back into the gym. And the weird part is some of the people that I knew, I think Nick and them were there, <laughs> they just stand up and they start clapping. It was so embarrassing, bro. My face was so oh, red. Oh, man. The color of uh, your shirt, I'm sure. Yeah. But boys will be boys, I guess. Dude. dude. It was fun. Yeah, but when I heard you interviewing Lewis and he told that story, I just started thinking of all the funny things that have happened to me. I was like, wow, you know, we can appear like we have this suave and like, you know, air of confidence, but yo, I've made all the mistakes you can make. (laughs) All of them. And then some dude, absolutely. But yeah, that was a super cool conversation. Again, highly encourage you to go check that out and it's doing real well for us on the channel and it's crushing like hours because you know i've been obsessed with like how do we get the hours up how do we get monetized and you put that one out and i said can you just do that every week (laughs) 
Yeah. Well, we have a lot of different, you know, concerts coming through town and some pretty big acts like Lil Wayne, T-Pain, Ava Max, just to name a few, some comedians. And I just got, uh, by the time this comes out, I think it's okay for me to say, but I just got an alert that we're announcing a 50 Cent concert. Dude, I just saw that on my Instagram. Everybody started posting like, yo, who's coming with me? Okay, so it's out. Sometimes I'll get the email and it'll say, yeah. don't announce until this day. And I I never really, I don't really pay attention to a lot of stuff. But <laughs> so I'm, I, I wrote back immediately Let's and I was see. like, whatever it takes, get me in the same room with 50 because that would just be oh, super cool. Man. Because I could tell him the story of, of seeing him at the Civic Center. Man, what a show. Portland. That was an amazing show. Yeah. It's a core memory for me as like con- far as concerts go. That was like my second concert ever. Yeah, my first ever was Eiffel 65. Oh, what, dude? Oh, I'm blue. <laughs> yeah. that be, that be, that. Where was that? At the Civic Center? That was at the Civic Center. It was some cute concert, and my mom won tickets. And then I remember being a kid. She's like, hey, we're all going. And that was like one of the biggest songs on the planet. So they open up with that song. Uh, and then they do like, I don't know, eight, nine other songs, and everyone's sitting on their hands and going to sleep. Do the so other song sudden, again. <laughs> They bring it back and the place just explodes, dude. And that's what I remember. My first ever show. Like some people have great ones. Like, you know, my first concert was like Aerosmith. Damn. Or it was, you know, it was this huge act or huge band. And I'm like, I my first was Eiffel 65. It wasn't my choice, but it was cool. You know, I had fun. The first one that I actually like chose to go to myself was 50 Cent. Yeah. It, well, and you know what's cool about the Eiffel 65 and the 50 Cent is it solidifies you as a millennial. You're like, yep, those are yeah. millennial concerts. And I think Fabulous opened and Poverty opened. That's right. Dude, Fab was there. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, I was hype on him at the time. Yeah, I was a big Fab fan too. I always thought he was hella good. I'm looking at the schedule uh, for 50 Cent because I'm trying to find the do you know the date of the Denver show? There it is. Oh, I found it. Geez. July twenty third. Okay. G unit. I just Man. want the whole G unit. That would be sick. Right. How cool would that be? And I know we got Lil Wayne here on Sunday, and I did a break today, and I go, I'm over here crossing my fingers, hoping Wayne performs knockout and Nikki shows up out of nowhere. <laughs> like I would lose my mind. Dude, you have a cool job. Very cool job. I guess you gotta yeah. say that. You just do. I'm lucky. Yeah, I'm lucky, dude. I I I I love it. As like mentally draining as it can be, if you don't take yourself too seriously and you kind of break it down, and this is a thing I always like to say, break it down to its lowest common denominator. Like I'm not out there laying brick having to do like hard manual labor like my dad does or so many people in this world. It's like I get to give away concert tickets and play Justin Bieber. And so talk. it's, yeah, it's, you know, it's, I love it, man. I, I've all, you know, this, I've always loved radio since I used to make my own pretend shows and like just fascinated with that voice inside the little box in your car. And how does that work? And where are they talking from? And like, I don't know, man, the whole thing about broadcasting, it just, it still gets me going to this day. And that's why I know this is what I want to do for a long time. Man, having a focus, like we talked about just last night doing some show prep, having one focus makes the rest of life so much easier. And like today, uh, me and my dad drove up to Bar Harbor and back. Just you know, bah, 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 just picking postcards and looking for paper and looking for collectibles. Like you're on the wrestling collectible kick and I'm on the sports and yo, I got today five or six starting lineup basketball from the eighties, which is super rare. Really? All I remember is the nineties. So I did get some nineties. Um, and the guy gave me everything for like 60% off which was legit. And he's like, yeah, I got more stuff at the house. I was like, dude, bring it. He's like, yeah, in two weeks, come back. I'm like, cool. Then bonus box, the only box of basketball cards, complete set, sky box, totally nerding out, um, series <laughs> two. And there's, it's the dream team. 92 cards are in there. So there's this set that spells out Barcelona with the whole team. And it's three cards. 
and they're in there and they're in perfect what? condition. And there's like six Michael Jordans and I'm, I paid 10 bucks for this box. Wow. So I was on the hunt and, uh, it's, it's what I've been doing. I've been doing eBay full time. So it's just nice to have one focus, man. Like the rest of my life now is like, cool, go to the gym. I'm doing 75 hard. I'm on day 31. I think I just mm-hmm. finished up. But Damn, dude, you're almost like halfway through the sucker. Ah, thankfully, I just want a slice of pizza, bro. The simple things. Yeah. I, that's all yeah. I want. Just a pizza, pizza and like a Miller Light, maybe, you know? Is that's that so what much I got to when, ask? I, when I first got back while I was in the Uber on my way home? I hadn't <laughs> eaten all day. And I'm like, you know, so I went on my, I ordered pizza from Papa John's, some wings. <laughs> I go over there to get it and they go, hey, we're going to toss in a free pizza just because. I guess somebody like pretended to order one like right before me. So they even called me like, Hey, is this really you? Like, yeah, I think it's me. It's, it's JR yeah. from the, <laughs> yeah, you can listen to me three to seven weekdays on the new hits. 95.7. You're home for commercial. You know, they're like, nah, that's fake. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're keeping your food, you know, but yeah, I got in, they tossed in a free pie and I was like, yo, this is the move right here. But then dude, I'm starting to like, it's it's tough for me to eat that kind of stuff because I can't work out the way that I want to work out because my back is so bad, like is well documented on yeah. the show. Yeah, but, but you're getting closer to getting the final like decision on it, right? Yeah. So as as things stand, my appointment is in like twenty days, about three weeks away. <sighs> can't come so, soon enough. Yeah. And hopefully from then if things don't get postponed or whatever. I'll have a plan of action and I'll be able to decide what surgery I'm going to do. Um, but yeah, that's a whole different can Bro, of worms. I got, okay. So I got to actually need some, some advice from you. Need some help. I think this could be a segment, but right now it's just this question's burning in my brain. <laughs> Dangerous ask Dangerous. for advice from me. <laughs> no, no, but I know, see, I know you'll give me an honest answer. That's why I like you, Ryan, people that even if I know what you're probably going to say, I still want to make sure I'm like, okay, well, he answered the same way. Good. I'm on the right track. Or I wasn't expecting that. Maybe I need to rethink this whole strategy. Yeah. Okay. So I was, you know, in the DMs trying to slide in, like being, trying to ask this girl out. Already? Uh, Golly, you just got back. Yeah. Well, you know, it's been a couple of weeks. So I was like, kind of like working it like slowly, but surely, you know, like you like a story or like reply and you you don't just like ask right away. You just like try to have a conversation. I don't need a name, but is it somebody that I know? It's not. Okay. Um, All right. So it gets to the point where I'm like, the conversation has been stale for like, I just got busy. She got busy. And you know, you just kind of like, you do your own thing. You stop talking and then you're like, Oh man, I didn't keep it going. Um, And then I was like, Hey, do you want to go out and do this thing? And she was, she was busy and I'm pretty sure legitimately busy and like, we don't know each other. So it was, I was kind of like, well, should we get to know each other more on text? I just always feel like it's better to just do that in person. Cause Hey, you'll have a good time on the date. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but you don't have to drag it out over text. So I guess my question is like, did I ask too soon or was it right to just shoot my shot? I don't think you asked too soon. I think you should just be like right off the bat. Yeah. You, just don't, like, need to, yeah. you don't need to warm that up. Like I'm about to celebrate four years with the girl that I'm with. Right ooh, now. Ooh, give it up. Right. That's impressive, bro. Four, yeah, four, four, you know? four life. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't know how, I don't know how I convinced her to go out with me in the first place, just, but the point I'm trying to make <laughs> yeah. is I had never spoken to her before, period. Okay. I, didn't even know who, I didn't even know who she was. And how did I that get set up? Out. Yeah, so a coworker of mine knew her okay. and was going to recommend some other dude to her, but then thought of me, I guess. Nice. And I like looked at her. I was like, there's no way this girl's going to Because you like know. looked her up real quick. You're like, oh, man. Like the, uh, all right, I guess yeah, that's the game right. up. <laughs> you know? Um but I just sent this text. Hey, my name is Jr. Uh, my coworker says that you're great. I'd love to take you out sometime and get to know you more. And it was all right. Yeah. Okay. See, I like that because I feel like I didn't give her enough of like a 
hey, I'd love to take you out and get to know you. I'm just going to go with that one. But I need to give yeah. it a few more days because I like, yeah. you don't want to do it right after. No, yeah, give it a few days, let it breathe. And, you know, that whole thing where it's like you go out on that first date and, all right, don't reach out for a few days, you know. It, like, the, don't. The, the game you're supposed to play. Yeah, it's just stupid. They want you to. They're waiting for you to even after the date, you know. So, so, what, did you, so what did you do after you guys went out for the first time? Bro, it was... It was borderline an atrocious first date. Let me just put that first and foremost, okay? I didn't know that I was going to get this good story, possibly. Can we hear yeah, about I'm, this atrocious first date? I'm full of a lot of stories, full of a lot of something. I'll tell you what. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. So my thought was, I'm going to take her to Top Golf because that could be fun. We'll hit some balls. We'll have some food. It's active, right? but you can chat. Yeah, you can still carry a conversation. And it's definitely out of my like price point, but I'm I'm gonna do it because you want to impress, right? Right. That's what right. Us dumb guys do. And it's not too far out, but you're like, I wouldn't regularly do this, but okay. Yeah. Except we we get there, she meets me there, and there's a four hour wait. Stupid me didn't know that you had to reserve anything. Bruh. I just thought you could go. That's how you know it's out of your price point. You're like, ah, right, got mm. it. Of course. <laughs> Anything that involves reservations. Too ritzy for me. I'm out. If I'm, I can't I'm, just show up, yeah, I'm right? a walk in kind of guy. Yes, you know, I'm a, I'm a walk up kind of dude. I'm walking here. So I'm like, dang, what are we gonna do? And she had Ubered there because I guess she was embarrassed of her car. I later learned. Ah. Um. But so I'm like, okay, well, I'm like scrambling. Audible. What are we gonna do? You know. Right. And I remember on this like work outing we went to this cool bowling alley in nashville and i was like well i'll just take her there it'll be fun it's it, we're just re replacing the golf part with bowling but we can still talk and pulled an audible and drink. oh my yeah. <laughs> so we get there and there's a six hour wait bro you get <laughs> worse I, and worse <laughs> come on <laughs> so i'm thinking this is doomed my gut reaction that this girl was out of my league there's no way she'll go out. like this is this is starting to become true so we can't play, but we can still get in. So we go hang out at the bar. And I was like, hey, you know, what do you want to drink? Do you want to get some food? Whatever. And later I learned one of the one of the core things that she remembered was that I don't drink. And she thought that was the coolest thing, which a lot of people are really surprised by that, if I'm honest. Well, and I think if I didn't know you, I'd be surprised because of the industry you work in. Right. She said the same thing. She went and looked through my Instagram and Twitter and just saw all the parties I hosted. This is a party. <laughs> this is, you know, and I'm just like that four to the floor party guy. And she's like, oh, he definitely, you know, drinks and does whatever. But no, I don't. So we just had a really good chat at the bar there. And I think, you know, I had a Sprite or something. And Dude, remember and the it, Shirley Temples? You used to crush those. Yeah, dude. That's probably why I'm battling my weight now. Sorry, my something got in my no, eye. That's all good. I was trying to think though. I love Shirley Temples. Tastes so good. They're the best. When I was a MC at the Gentleman's Club, the bartender used to make those for me all the time. <laughs> and every time I would come in for a shift, she would bring one to the booth. It was awesome. Yeah. That's so, legit. Yeah. From there, it's like, okay, well, what can we do? She recommends we go down to this like billiards place downtown and it's right next to coyote ugly which is like from the movies right so we go into this place and we're playing pool and dave i'm not even kidding you it was the single worst game of pool that had ever been played we were both <laughs> terrible <laughs> terrible so the game's going so bad that i say hey you know if you want me to bring you home I w I understand like this, this isn't going well. Like genuinely you were like I just this is yeah. not my I'm not my best. This is just not me. I was ready to toss in the towel and she goes, "No, I'm having fun." And then we go over and we play pop shot and we're doing the air hockey and then we decide we're going to go into Coyote Ugly and we're going to have a conversation in a loud bar where people are Bruh. dancing on top of the bar. Terrible idea. So again, it's just still going bad. So neither still of you is bad. helping each other. It just, I mean, no. yeah. <laughs> I think at some point she was like, you know, like, you know, what are you into? Or, you know, you don't drink. What do you do? Like, what's your vice? Like, I'm hookah. Mm -hmm. She goes, well, there's a, a lounge up the street. Do you want to go? 
You're and like, right there, <laughs> everything opened up. And Zach, I was like, okay, <laughs> we, yes, let's go. Zach, I can Zach Morris, my, freeze frame. You're like, yeah. Time out. <laughs> and then I look and address the camera. This will be perfect. Why? <laughs> because I can be myself. I'm really good at this. I can blow some dope smoke rings and we can carry, the, you know. Yeah. So we go there and we have a great conversation and we're, you know, got the hookah going, all that stuff. And we ended up being there for a while. The date was like six hours. Well, hey, that was the wait time. So you could have gone to (laughs) bowling. (laughs) Right. Well, that was because we had to travel from place to place in the beginning, you know, but yeah, one of the, one of the core things she said too was she only agreed to the second date because I opened the door for her to get in the car so and to get out. Gentlemen moves are key. Which I don't know if that's like Southern. a New England thing or a New Southern England. thing or like, I don't know, but that's just how I was always raised, how to like Same. treat a lady. Like it's it's a you know big deal. Or like the sidewalk um, rule. I'm like, it's like yeah. built in. I just like do it. Yeah. And that can get tricky sometimes, especially if you're in a parking lot. You're like, okay, so am I on this side in case somebody backs up? But yeah. what if somebody swings through the, I don't know. You know you what, just, just, just piggyback ride, let's go. Yeah, you try to do your best with it. But yeah, ultimately, I got a second date out of it. And second date, I showed up with sunflowers because I had saw a picture she posted in a sunflower field. She loved them. She's like, oh my God, this is great. And on the second date, we went and got sushi. And if... You know me probably uh, better than anybody. Yes. That's not I don't your bag. Eat sushi. <laughs> no, you, I've never ever seen you even I'd like get it. You'd be like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Bro, I had a rock in my stomach for four days. So you I just literally pretended bit the like bullet. I liked yeah, pretended like I liked it. The and then the third date, we go for Thai food. Not my wheelhouse either. Again, stu- like rock in my stomach for two, three days, but yeah, man, I was just, you know, you, you want to impress. And even now, about yeah. four years in, I still, I want to impress. You know, not not in the way that I did before, but in yeah. different ways. No but more man versus food. No, absolutely <laughs> not. She knows, like, Bro. you can have this, I can have that, you know? That's great. That's so cool. Yeah, I mean, because I, like, I definitely want to ask this girl out. I'm, and one of my key traits is I'm persistent. Like I, I won't stop until you're, you're like, okay, like just lay it out. You got to tell me yes or no. I'm not going to take maybe and I, but I will take no, I'm not going to, I don't stock. No, you don't need to do it. You can tell too. You can kind of like read, even if somebody doesn't say straight out that, yeah, no, I don't think so. You can kind of read the room, but not next time I need to just do the, the ask. Yeah. Just like. Right off the bat, Boom. you meet somebody, you're out with your friends, or you meet her at this the concert or at the baseball game, and it's, hey, I'd really like to get, you know what I mean? Like, if, if you're just upfront about it, and you're not trying to be slick and sly, and, you know, if yep. you're just like, hey, this would be cool, what do you think? Right. And the worst they can say is no. And then it's, you're like, on to the next one. Yeah, so... But, dude, it's a brutal world out there, I man. Know. Especially with, like, what we talked about recently on the show with all the different boxes that guys have to check. And excuse my voice. I've been, I've been talking good, on the air all day. So I'm trying to clear that out. But yeah, all the different boxes. And then it's like, if you're too forward with asking out, it's oh, like you're a creep and you're a loser. But if you're not interested, you're cool. And if you're a D-bag, then you're... I don't know, dude. I just... It's a tale as old as time. Just be yourself. Be yourself. Want me to sting her? <laughs> Remember, just be yourself. Nah, that's that's great advice. Mm-hmm. That's that's why I asked. It's, I mean, that's kind of the route that I've been, you know, thinking about taking. And um, as a busy person as well, uh, I guess an entrepreneur, you know, I just, all my time is consumed with how do I make money? How do I, you know, yep. if I'm not working out or we're not chatting, honestly, I'm pretty much just working. So I yeah. can, I can totally understand somebody who's, they just got work. Um, but bro, this ain't over. This is just the beginning. Just getting started. And I can't wait for week to week updates with how bro, this is going. <laughs> I'll let you know, you, everybody at the very least, you're all going to be entertained at what happens next. Yeah. 
We'll see. I, don't, I, I mean, I don't know. One of the things that, uh, sidebar, that I've been talking about lately on the air, because we're right in the middle of prom season. Right? Ooh, pro- dude, you used to crush proms DJing. <laughs> Good times. Yeah, dude. And 2021 was my last tour. I hung up the hat, seven schools, five weekends. Salute. Thank you very much. Um, but it got me thinking, and and we've been doing these different topics, or not we, me, I guess. We, on my the show. royal we. Yeah. So <laughs> it's just been about like promposals. And I got this one silly call where this guy dressed up like Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> and in the middle of the cafeteria, he busted out, no one speaks like Gaston. No one speaks <laughs> like Gaston. And asked her to prom. And she said yes. And I was like, <sighs> Tell me you wore the big yellow dress. She's like, no, I didn't. I was like, you missed an opportunity there. Uh, but it got me thinking of this topic I almost brought up today. Hmm. And it was, I got kind of betrayed by one of my cousins back in the day. Your cousin? Yeah, my cousin. <laughs> and uh, Okay. What happened? I don't know. If, okay. We can cut it if, if it's not, uh, but I'm curious. Right. Okay. So I don't, I don't really hold the grudge. But I still remember it. I think this was junior prom, okay. right? And no, uh, may have been it's, senior prom actually. Okay. So it makes this even worse, man. Uh, Gosh. man. Well, get it out. It's the, this so, is the creator therapy. I had pitched in for this limo. Okay. Well, my mom did for me to so I could ride in with my cousin and her friends, and mm-hmm. I didn't. Ha- I didn't even have a date because me and my girlfriend at the time had just split up. So I was rolling the myself. timing, dude. Going stag. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, dude. You know, it's. It seems like a big deal in the moment. You look back, it's, it's just not. I was, You're like, it's no. just another night. You're like, cool. All right. Yeah. So I'm out there just on the porch. I'm in my tux. This, you know, and I'm waiting, and. You know, some time goes by and some more time goes by. I'm like, well, dang, like the dance already started. Like, where is it? Where is everybody? So I finally get a hold of my cousin and it's, oh, no, we totally forgot. So they, they, they just decided not to come pick me up. Nah, bro. Unforgivable. To this right? day. Unforgivable. To this day. Senior prom night, dude. You like, nah, you, you only dude. get one of those, right? Yo. Your cousin owes you. Yeah. So, man, I and it gets even worse because I had become friends with an underclassman from marketing class, and he's now like the he's like the mayor of Westbrook. Yo, all right. <laughs> so sick. You always knew he was gonna like. I always knew he was gonna do something like that, and uh, I had to call an underclassman to come pick me up, to drop me off at my senior prom because I didn't drive. This is also well documented. No, you did not. Yeah. Wow. Didn't think it was going to take that turn right there. No. So he drops me off and I go in there and do my thing. And I loved dancing. So once like some of the jams were playing, I was having a good time, but is it just me or did the DJs just suck back in like the mid 2000s when we were graduating high school? Yeah, they were pretty trash and they never had the new stuff you wanted. No, and it was it was all it was all played off CDs. It, it was never mixed. It was just talk in between. Bring down one, bring up the next <laughs> one and I don't know. I think that was one of the reasons I became like a prom DJ. I'm like I'm going to bring a festival to these kids and give them a night that they're going to remember. And uh but yeah, that that's like that's one of Dude. the things about prom that really sticks in my head still. That would and, yeah, uh, just stick in my craw forever. Yeah. It's kind of messed up, you know. It is messed up. That's not kind of. Like you just left someone with no remorse, no yeah. regard. Do you not have a heart? Do you not have, not a, soul? have a soul? <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> But eventually we I would get over it and I wound up moving in with her because she needed a roommate. Yeah. Right. And it was, I think it was the apartment above her mom's place. So, and then, man, I don't know if I can be saying all this stuff, but we still don't have a great relationship to this day. To this day. (laughs) Because I don't know what went down. I got into an argument with one of her other roommates, one of her friends, and she chose, she chose her, her, other friend over her family and they kicked me out 
Yo, I thought we was kin. <laughs> I thought we was family. I th- Yo, this person just has it out for you. Vin Diesel would be appalled right now. Yeah, come on. You Around know? here, we do this for family. For family. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, you know, still don't really talk to this day, but it's like civil, you know? Yeah, but, I think I think I'm just going to bleep out like this person and we'll tell okay. the story. Yeah. You're like my, and then my, you know what I mean? That's yeah. That's that's a good idea because I don't want to comp. I don't want to like complicate things even more. And yeah, like, we're we're on like you know stand like fine terms now. Like it's we're grown ass people. Like, you but know, it's there's still, no sense at some that. point. Where's the apology? Yeah, that's the, come on now. Can't move on without an apology. Yeah. So I don't know. For some reason, I felt compelled to bring that up. I don't know why, because I I wanted to. I wanted to tell the prom story today on the air, but I was right. like, ah, I couldn't really like, you know, fit it in. And I, I wound up doing something else. Oh, you know what I wound up doing? I talked about uh, TSA horror stories. Perfect. Cutest timing. thing happened. Yeah. So I told my story about what happened, <sighs> teased it, paid it off, solicited for callers. And I get, I get this like, I don't know, this eight or nine year old boy calls in with his mom and she's coaching him on what I, cause I, I can, Amazing. I can hear them both. And he goes, he goes, well, I was, I was coming back from California and I snuck a crab through TSA. <laughs> <laughs> what, dude? Yeah. So like a live they crab like, from the a beach? A live crab. Yeah. From the beach. And they found it in his bag. And they're like, is this a crab? <laughs> He's like, yeah, it's from, from the beach. And I, I guess because it wasn't a liquid, they let him get on board with this. That's my pet crab. <laughs> This is my pet crab, Betty. You know, yo, Mr. Crab. I just thought, yeah, I thought it was so cute because his mom is coaching him and like you know helping him say it, and he really wanted to call in. And I remember being that kid when I was young, so that was pretty damn cool. But yeah, I wanted to bring up the prom thing, and then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be chatting with Dave tonight anyway. <clears throat> Let me just bring that up. I don't know, man. I just felt compelled about it. I love it. We're just here for the stories, man. I'm I'm trying to think. You know now would be the best time uh, talking to you knowing that people don't really call in. Yo, if I was in the Denver area, I'd just be calling your show every day because I know I you're going to pick that. up every time, dude. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you do call me and I'll give you, you know, my thoughts, my hot takes love yep. to do it. But yeah. Yeah. If I was a kid, I mean the cool, I was talking to Matt today, we went to the gym and the reason that I know Matt is because he knew who you were because he listened to your show. I, yeah, that's always still, that's still like super cool. And then me. he was like, whoa, wait, this guy works with Jeff and he's got a YouTube. <laughs> oh man. And now I fucking hang out with that kid every day. Yeah. What? A, it's so crazy, man. What a small world, right? Yeah. Super small world. Man. But we're crushing it. He's crushing 75 hard. That was his idea. So dude, we're going to be lean, mean, out on the scene, you know? Fighting machines. Dude. Just laying Hell by the yeah. bay, eating some hay. I just may. Man. What do you say? <laughs> Down by the bay. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah. Um, yeah, Maddie B. But dude, I it's not I'm not like hung up on this girl, but it's I have one focus. I'm not like trying to talk to a bunch of girls. So I'm like, okay, that's a good sign. Well, that's just exhausting. It's also exhausting. I just don't I, I don't have time, dude. I just yeah. where's the time? I just don't have it. No, and you can't, you can't keep up because you don't know like what it's just. Man. No, I, I'm, no, plus you know me, I'm all in. Like I'm just gonna focus on one thing at a time, and then the next thing. I'm not a big multitasker. Everybody says multitasking is good. I don't believe that. You can have lots of like projects and like things happening in your life at once, but I'm not on the show trying to like text and trying to do this other stuff. Like that'd be crazy. Yeah. No, I get what you're saying. As part of my job, multitasking is kind of, it's necessary. It's a necessary evil. And that's when you can start to make mistakes, though. Right. Because you're like, did I just cut that? Was that the right amount of time? Did I put that in there? Yeah, You have a lot of moving parts. You got to be very careful about it because you're doing a live broadcast. And on top of that, you're a social media influencer. You're a (laughs) full-time blogger. You're a video editor. You're a podcaster. You're answering phone calls. You're, you know, giving away concert tickets, entering people's personal information. Like... You're doing a ton of different stuff. So when I get to like come here 
and sit down and talk to you, it's like I get to just focus on one thing. And even if even if I'm doing my show, it's like, yeah, I'm doing a bunch of things, but the way that I split it up in my mind is okay, this right now, but then and then after I'm gonna do this. I'm not gonna be on the air while I'm sending somebody a text message. Exactly. While I'm, that's yeah. and so that's the point I'm making. I think a lot of people wrongly say, Oh, I'm multitasking, but really what you're doing is perfectly you're like Focus on this, then on this, then on this, back on this, then on this. I mean, but I've noticed like I'll even be scrolling on my phone while me and Matt are trying to watch, like we're watching the Pacific right now. We're on episode seven and I'm like, oh man, I just missed like 10 minutes of the show. What am I doing? Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's so, it's, it's embarrassing, but we're so just dependent on our goddamn (sighs) cell phones. It's like, I'll be there. I was just watching a, a Netflix show that you recommended to me. The, um king of collectibles the collectible king dude, yeah so good dude it was pretty damn cool i got to see logan paul in there rick flair kind of solicited a woman which that was, was bizarre when you text me i was like i know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about <laughs> yeah like you got to see peyton manning and drake was like it was it was pretty damn cool man and uh i'm sitting there and i had just posted a new toy hunt video and I just start looking through the comments and answering comments and following people back. I got like a bunch of new followers from one of the videos, which Legit. felt pretty cool because now Instagram will tell you, hey, hmm. so-and-so followed you because of this reel. I'm like, well, this is pretty cool. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I'm like answering and, you know, hey, thanks for the follow. Hey, you know, what are you into? Just like, and then I'm like, damn, I just missed that. Like you just said, I just yeah. missed that whole 10 minutes. What just happened? I got to go back. Yeah, we're so just dependent on our damn cell phones. It's like, man, I wish I could just like, just turn it off and throw it in the ocean sometimes. Well, yeah, me too. Remember, Life would be so much simpler, wouldn't it? It would be. Um, but you'd have to like send me a messenger pigeon or whatever <laughs> and just be like, Dave, get back to me. It's been seven days. Where are you? Yeah. Imagine if we were just sending letters. Mad mad times when people were doing that and I've come across a lot of them going to the paper show with my dad like last weekend and you'll be reading like this person wrote this in 1907 to someone and they're like I'm doing this thing it's all in script so it's really hard to read and that was just common and you'd be like sitting there like waiting for the letter like you know the meme sent hit hit buy on Amazon Amazon. you stand at the window that's what people really did they just like in the winter just looking out the window I wonder if if Jonathan will write me back. Hopefully. You, you know, <laughs> speaking of this, did you ever have a pen pal? Hmm. Like, I did, like in dude. school, they would encourage that. I had, well, I had pen pals in Japan when I, okay. I did that baseball program with Portland and Shinagawa. And these dudes, to their credit, would like figure out how to write me in English because I had wow. no idea how to write kanji, the Japanese characters. And be like, hey, like, how are you? It's good here. You know, basic stuff. But it was like, yeah. I was like, yo, I just got a postcard from Tokyo. This is sick. That is pretty damn cool, man. I remember in school doing the whole pen pal thing. And it was it was like somewhere overseas. I don't remember. Or it may, it may have even been in the States somewhere. Just somewhere far away, I just remember as a kid. And there was a couple letters sent back and forth. But then it kind of stopped. But... I've definitely seen Lifetime movies about pen pals that go bad. Yeah, bro. You know? Yeah, so, bro. Uh, yeah, it's just such Gotta an interesting careful. thing. Because now, if you were to get, like, an email from, you know, one of your old baseball buddies from back in Japan, mm-hmm. you can literally just click translate. Yep. Well, and think Crazy. about this, too. Sending letters back then, even if, you know, because you're putting your whole address on there, return address. People can't Google your address. Like, they know what country you're in or state, but they can't, like, go find you unless they know they've been there. Right. So it's safer. Now it's like, all right, cool. I have your return address. I can, like, zoom in on your house. (laughs) Just pinch zoom. I'm just like, I'm going to find you. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Mad times we're living in. Mad times back then. I think the thing to remember, everyone, is it's always crazy, whatever area you live in. People like a hundred years from now will be like, how do those people survive with just an iPhone and regular Wi-Fi? That's madness. Mine's in my yeah. brain now. And I just transmit yeah. thoughts. It's like that. It's like that meme I keep seeing of WWF no mercy from 98. And it's yes. like the, the graphics. The, it's Steve Austin. <laughs> yeah. And it's like 
you know, dumb me back in 98 thinking that graphics could never get better than this. Never. So and it's that's blocks. just going to, yeah, until until the end of time. And I don't know when that will be, but. Yeah. But yeah, for man. us, hopefully it's another like 70 years or, or you know, yeah. I don't know. However much longer I got, I'm just going to live it up. Yeah. I'm here, you know, just to try to continue to overachieve. That mean, I love that. Yeah. It, there's coming from where I did raise the way I did in the neighborhoods that I like, there's Started no from way the bottom. Now we're here. Now I'm here. Uh, uh, from the sitting bottom. in the club, two twins in my lap. Uh, Started from the bottom, drink a bit. <laughs> drink it. What? But yeah, dude, I'm just here to overachieve as much as I can. And just, you know, I talk to some people within the radio industry and they're often so worried about what their perception is amongst their peers. Dog, I don't think you ever think about that. I mean, no, I think I, maybe I, at one point you did when yeah. you were like still learning how to do the job. But I think now you're like, yo, I got to focus on my job. I got too much to do. Yeah, that's the thing is you, it, once you get to a point in your career, you don't have time to think about that stuff, period. No. It's all the points that I made earlier, the live broadcast, the social media influencer, the endorsements, the this, the that. It's like you got no time for any of that stuff. Plus, you want to have your personal hobbies. You still want to have your relationships and your friends and your romances and whatever. And, yeah, you got to just, I don't know, man. I remember working in Nashville getting some big-time hate from a top jock in New York, the hate, number hate, one hate, market. Hate, 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 hate. If you got hate in your heart, let it let out. It out. <laughs> and uh, I remember I was super pissed about it. And I was like, you know, this guy. And now, <laughs> you know, I, that's, as, that's as far as I'm going to go. Yeah. So I don't. Now you're like, you, you know, know what? This is small potatoes. It's not, it's not a big deal to me. No, it doesn't matter anymore, dude. It's just. You know, as long as your superiors are happy with the work that, that you're doing, our station's doing great right now. I'm putting up good numbers. And I feel like being a year and a half in now, I'm really starting to slowly but surely connect with the audience. They're, they're becoming more familiar with me and, uh, you know, understanding me and learning more about me. And, I'm you know, yeah, just bro. through all the different trial and error. You're like, I'm really, I, I just, I feel really good about the work that I'm doing right now. So it feels good. I love, dude, I love to hear it. I was going to make a joke, but it's not appropriate. I don't want to make it. I'm just going to keep it to myself. Yeah. Um, but I want to end this selfishly. I have one more ask for you. All right. I, I may or may not use this, but oh, I may use this a lot. Um, give whoever I'm potentially going to date. What's the reason that someone should date me? You've known me basically your whole life. Why should someone date Dave? Because Dave doesn't make emotional decisions ever. Ooh. I've known you 25 years. You have hands like a surgeon. You have patients that are unmatched and no matter what situation that you're into with him, whether it's good or bad or uncomfortable or awkward, it's always going to be even keel. And you're always going to get the truth because Dave's not going to say things out of emotion like I have the mistake of doing from time to time. So you're going to get a great person who's even keel, who's hella successful, and I feel like this is like Bro. one of those tapes, you know, call now, one eight nine nine Dave. This is the most fire testimonial I've ever got <laughs> yeah. for anything. And now punch in. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, no, you're gonna you're gonna get <laughs> yeah, just uh a guy that's been my best friend for twenty five years and I don't ever really remember us just like fighting, fighting, you know, because you mm -hmm. know, I I can be erratic sometimes and make emotional choices, but I've never known you to make one. I've never even seen you angry. So, man, and the one thing that can make dudes nuts and lose their marbles is women. But I don't see that happening for you. So whatever, whatever happens throughout these dates or whatever could become a relationship, just know you're, you're always going to get the real thing, bro. That's why you're my dog. Put it so well. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you, bro. I appreciate yeah. that. I'm gonna and chop that, that up. Demo should be coming through, right? Yeah, it's uh, it just is. it's on the there way. Yep. 
<laughs> Good. Hit the cash app. <laughs> Anyway, man, dude, it's been so great catching up with you. Uh, we yeah. got so much more to talk about, but uh, for Dave, I'm JR. This has been Hanging with Homie, and we appreciate you being here. We'll catch you next week, all right? Peace.